From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. Tim Connors, John Boy. Congratulate me. Congratulations, Tim. What for? I just had another boy. Seven pounds, 12 ounces. Hey, you like cigars? Sure. Well, come on down and pick one up. Oh, maybe you better pack a suitcase, too. I got one for you out in Culver, Montana. Where is that? I just told you. Out in Montana somewhere. We have a dead policyholder there named Henderson. Henderson, huh? Yeah. Now, we don't know if he was murdered, committed suicide, or had an accident. What does it look like? All three. Okay, Tim, be there in an hour. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Paramount Insurance Adjusters, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Henderson matter, whatever it's going to be. Expense account item one, dollar and a quarter for a detailed map. I had an idea that Culver, Montana was a place that only Rand McNally might know about. They did. I found it tucked up in the high northern corner of the state near Great Falls. Hey, where's your bag? Home. I told you to pack it. Now, look, Give John. Give me a cigar, Tim. Tell me about the new boy in the new case. Okay, have a chair. There you are. I wouldn't smoke it if I were you. Terrible. Cost me two bucks a box. Hey, you know something? I'm thinking of naming the new boy Johnny. Oh, tough case, huh? Yeah. Hmm? Look, look. We're in the same sweet old spot, Johnny. Same old problem. One of our policyholders is dead, and for looking into the circumstances of his death, the insurance company is no longer a friend of the widow and orphan, but a big, bad monster trying to weasel out of a just claim. All claims are just claims, or are they? Well, of course they are. No one ever tried to pull a fast one on an insurance company. Well, the world's full of nice, honest, straight-playing people. Uh -huh. Now tell me about getting sandbagged in a poker game. Look, I want to get this out of the way and get back over to the hospital and see my wife. Now, John, this claim came into the insurance office yesterday afternoon, airmail special. The insurance company turned it over to me today. What company? Western. The policy's worth $25,000 face value, double indemnity if death was by accident. No payment for suicide. Uh-huh. You say the man's name was Henderson? Yeah, it says here, George Walter Henderson, Montana rancher. Last Thursday, he fell four stories out of a hotel window in Culver and died instantly. At least that's what we have in this report here. Somebody could have shoved him, or he could have taken the leap. Now, we have to know for certain. Oh, what's on the claim report? Accidental. There was no inquest, no police investigation, and that's not good enough for us. Uh-huh. This Henderson prominent? Well, he was big enough, Johnny. Cattleman, rancher. He was also a major stockholder in the only newspaper in Culver, so I doubt if his paper suggests suicide or anything else. Do you? I don't know, Tim. I never met the editor. Well, meet him if you like. Talk to him. Talk to anybody in Culver. Find out what was what. <laughs> this is a lousy cigar. Johnny... You know how to handle these things. We have to have more information than this. Have you tried to do anything on it at all? Yeah, I phoned the sheriff's office long distance and talked to a man named Holton, Eve Holton. He said he'd be happy to cooperate. Well, what else? I phoned the beneficiary to get some information. Name's Pauline Henderson, his widow. Is she going to cooperate, too? I don't think so, pal. Huh? She hung up on me. We will continue with the Henderson matter in a moment. Friends, how'd you like to thrill your favorite youngster with some of the most exciting toys of the year? Picture the breathless excitement of any child surrounded by six gaily colored balloon-like giant animals up to three feet long, and all for the low, low price of just one dollar. First, you get Bounce-O the Clown with round pot belly and funny nose. Next comes Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo. Third, there's Roscoe the Roller Skating Bear. He's two feet tall and looks almost like real. Fourth, there's Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman. And fifth, Mortimer the Giant Mouse, 18 inches long and sure to scare the whiskers off any cat. That's five different giant animals. But now hold your breath for the most sensational toy of all, the star of the whole Christmas season, the jolly giant talking Santa Claus. Guaranteed to make everybody's Christmas a merrier one. He's a big, roly-poly, happy Santa. He stands erect on two legs, is actually over three feet tall and 32 inches around. Best of all, he actually talks. Just pull the tape and he says, me. 
Merry Christmas for all to hear. He's the biggest, merriest, talking as Santa ever. Sure to please your youngsters and spread good cheer. Yes, Giant Santa proves there really is a Santa Claus. That's a total of six giant animals made of brightly colored preformed sturdy latex, which the kids can easily inflate. And the cost, just one dollar, not for each. Just one dollar for all six of these lovable giants who'll turn your home into a circus parade. And here's a surprise. Mail your order today and you'll also receive absolutely free Peter the Rabbit, actually over two feet tall with big red ears almost nine inches long. But you must send now. Rush one dollar plus ten cents for packing and mailing for each set you want to Giant Animals, Box 90, Grand Central Station, New York City. If not delighted with every one of your seven giant animals, return them to the Super Animals Company for a full refund, but keep the giant talking Santa as our gift. Order now. Supplies are limited. Rush $1.10 for packing and mailing for each set in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 90, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents with your name and address. Mail to Giant Animals, Box 90, Box 90, Grand Central Station, New York City. Giant Animals, Box 90, Grand Central Station, New York City. Expense account item two, $185.65. Airfare, Hartford, Connecticut to Great Falls, Montana. The nearest point I could make to Culver by air. Item three, three bucks. I took the train to Culver. Sometimes when I'm having nightmares, I dream about the smelter stack standing up against the cadaverous hills that lie to the south of town. Everything, including the three or four feet of snow covered with a uniform dinginess, made Culver an ugly little town set in an ugly notch between two ugly mountains. The only hotel in town was the Butte. It happened to be four stories high. It also happened to be the place where George Henderson had met his death. Okay, just a minute. Mr. Dollar? Yeah. I'm Eve Holton, sheriff here. Huh? You're from the insurance people, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Been expecting that you'd be in sooner or later. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Holton. Uh, call me Eve, son. Everybody does. And, uh, hey, uh, got a drink on you? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, I got one on me. <laughs> nice and chilly, too. <laughs> well, I'll see if there's some glasses around here, Sheriff. Hey, you didn't waste any time looking me up. No, I guess I didn't, son. Thought it'd save a little time this way. Knew you'd be looking me up sooner or later. I really thought we ought to have this drink together. Private. May not have any more together while you're here. Uh-huh. Well, health and happiness, boy. Uh, same to you. <clears throat> now, this drink we're having. This is in your room, and I'm just a fellow welcoming you to Culver. In my office or on that street out there, I'm a sheriff. And I'm going to be real official. All right, go on. I want you to notice I'm not asking any questions of you, son. I'm just answering anything that you might want to ask me right now. All right. You're going to have to plow ahead yourself on this one pretty much alone. And let me tell you what kind of plowing you got in store for you. Excuse me. <sighs> now, first off, this is a little burg like you ain't used to. We got 3,500, 4,000 people living here. Some of them work in that mine you've seen on your way into town. Others hire out to work on the ranches around here. Some in business. Uh -huh. Very tight little place. We hardly ever fool around with anybody else. Sure. Now, you're here because your insurance company don't like to pay off on a policy without knowing whys and wherefores. They don't like the word accident without knowing some of the details. No, they don't. There's a lot of people here, most people, who don't care about those details. As a matter of fact, son, they'd all just as soon put old George Henderson down in the ground and say it was an accident and let it go with that. Well, maybe it was, Sheriff. I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Yeah, well, now, let me go on. Those people who don't like the details don't like detail getters. You understand? Uh, yeah. Scare you any? Not yet. <laughs> you do all right, son. So, maybe you'd kind of like to get your coat on and come to your funeral with me. Starts at three. Henderson's? Yeah, give you a chance to look around, get the lay of the land. Okay, good idea. I wondered what kind of bull workers insurance companies turned out. I like you, Dollar. You're all right. You ain't bothering with any questions till you got some worthwhile asking. You tired? A little. 
Well, this won't take too long. A half hour later, I was standing beside Sheriff Eve Holton on a flat-top hillside that served as the cemetery. The snow was white and gleaming under the winter sun of the mid-afternoon skies. The air cold and crisp. To thee, our Heavenly Father, who knoweth all things, we commit the body of our beloved to thy eternal care. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Trusting ever in thy mercy, we invoke the consolation of thy sheltering wing. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of resurrection into eternal life, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Here. Oh, that's that. Yeah. Poor George. Eve. Hmm? Which one is Mrs. Henderson? There. That's Pauline Henderson? Yeah, that's her. Well, she can't be more than 25. 26, to be exact, Dollar. I went to her birthday party two months ago. Well, how old was George Henderson? 59. Went to his party, too. <sighs> yeah. Pretty thing, hmm? Very. Any other family? Nope. No other wife, huh? Nope. Want to meet her? No, not right now. Mm-hmm. Well, suit yourself. Kind of thought you might start thinking when you got a look at her. Mm-hmm. Now, now, just keep on the way you're doing. You're doing fine. When there's something you got to know, you'll find out. Well, Leif, I already know one thing. Yeah? What's that? I'm going to ask for a coroner's inquest. Just from seeing her? Just from seeing her. Mm-hmm. You're a sly one, Johnny. Johnny Dollar will be back in a moment to tell you about tomorrow's episode. Friends, send for your set of some of the most exciting toys of the year. Six giant inflatable toys for only one dollar, some up to three feet tall. You get Bounce the Happy Clown, Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo, Roscoe the two feet long roller skating bear, Whitey the fat indoor snowman, Mortimer the giant mouse 18 inches long, and last but not least, the great giant talking Santa, a roly-poly giant over three feet tall and 32 inches around the belly that actually says Merry Christmas out loud when you pull the tape. That's six sensational giant toys for only one dollar, made of sturdy, gaily colored latex that the kids can easily inflate. Send one dollar for each set to Giant Animals, Box 90, Grand Central Station, New York City. And if you order right now, you get Peter the Rabbit over two feet tall absolutely free. If not delighted with your giant animals, your money refunded immediately. Order today, you may never hear this offer again. Rush one dollar plus ten cents for packing and mailing in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 90, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's one dollar plus ten cents for each set with your name and address to Giant Animals, Box 90, Grand Central Station, New York City. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of The Henderson Matter. Tomorrow, I find out how hard it is to believe what I see. And I see plenty. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>